love Sulacoga. I'm here with things going on in Sulacoga Facebook page. And as you can see, we've got a big old Dobbs bus behind us. This is some visitors that we've got to the Magic of Marble Festival going on here in Sulacoga from the 11th through the 22nd. And I'm out here just to give a little intro. We've got a big group coming out here from Valley, Alabama. And we're at the look Emory's Lookout Point out here. And this is the original Quarry Hall. This is where it all started back in the early 1900s. And uh, they're going to come out here and I'm going to give them a little history lesson on the Getz Quarry. And as Paul will show you here in just a minute, you can see way over there where it's at. I told you they drill holes and they bait them up. But nowadays, you know, we use, not, we use dynamite. So they'll go in there and they'll blast the section and then they'll go in there and they'll take it out with a big truck, what we call you. They're, uh, we could all probably stand by one of the tires on these jukes. They're so big that they haul these rocks out there. Again, I want to welcome all y'all Silicon. Thank y'all so much for coming to the Marvel Festival. Uh, did everybody have a good time? Yeah. yeah. I know it's been a long day, and I'm going to keep this short and sweet. That way I know y'all, most of y'all are ready to get back home. But I want to give you a little history. If you'll notice this sign right here, says Moretta Hare. At one time, there was three different companies out here. You had Moretta Hare, and then you had Thompson Wyman, and then there was Georgia Marble. Each one of them had their own hole. And if you can look way in the distance, you can see where these are now. Now it's one gigantic hole. They all kind of work together. And uh, one company blasts and mines and gets the marble out. And they have to wash it. And then uh, whatever the customer wants, they might want big rock, you know, for maybe a seawall. They might want little rocks for a driveway, whatever the application may be. And then we got the other the other company there, which is called Omnia. They actually take the marble and grind it up and make marble dust and what y'all would call slurry, what us local folks call liquid marble dust. Same thing. But it is in so many products that uh, like Judy was telling you at the museum while ago, I know everybody brushed their teeth this morning. Most of that was liquid marble dust. It is actually a filler. It is probably in 70 to 80 percent of a gallon of paint. It is in almost every can of food you get off your grocery shelf. It's got a little bit of marble dust in it. It's a calcium car calcium carbonate and. Uh, it might not be good for breathing purposes, and, and you know, in case you got sinus trouble, but it is actually good for you. Uh, Rolaids, Tums, it's almost all of it. Uh, matter of fact, the guys that work out here, when they first go to work, one of the main safety things that they tell them, they give them a pair of sunglasses. You can't really tell today because it's overcast, but this marble is so white, it'll actually blister your eyes out here. So besides earplugs and uh, safety vests and stuff, the main thing they have to wear out here is sunglasses because it'll blister your eyes. It is so bright. The only place in the world you will find this white marble is right here in Sulacoga. Wow. And uh, actually, the man that first invented, if you can use your imagination, right? On the other side of these trees right here was a town. It was called Gantz Quarry, and it was a little city. Dr. Gant, Edward Gant, he actually came down here with Andrew Jackson. He was a physician, and he kind of discovered uh, marble up here at what we call Plank Road. It's about 20 miles from here. But it wasn't exactly what he was looking for. It was different color marble. And then he heard about this white marble down here. So he come down here and uh, 
the only way that he was going to be able to mine this for it was to build a little town because he needed help. Well, the little uh, building y'all seen behind the museum there, that was the original post office. And they had a couple of churches, maybe one or two little old stores, and a school. And uh, some of us that live here in Sylacauga, our grandparents and uh, a lot of our kin folks actually went to the Gantz Quarry School. So none of that's there anymore because uh, come to find out, well, actually, some things they started finding out the prices they could get. Like I told y'all earlier, the Lincoln Memorial, a lot of the White House, a lot of our capital, all that stuff that you see that's white came from right here in Sylacauga. So if you can use your imagination again, you can imagine that little town over there. Well, Sylacauga kind of came about when they got this mobile out of the ground, what are they gonna do with it? They're gonna sell it. So different companies started forming around Sylacauga to transport this marble. And uh, it kind of moved out and come to find out, Moretta Hire sat right over here about where you see the white part, uh, where the hole actually starts, right past where you can see right there. And it goes for a long way, a little less than 10 miles right now. And uh, what they done when uh, East China Clay, which we used to call ECC, they was the next buyers. And they come in here and they said, well, you know, there's three quarries here. I think we'll just buy all three of them. So they formed East China Clay. Now it has split up. You know, some investors come in here from New York y'all can imagine that in 1906 and they purchased the my, the mineral rights and all that and uh they changed it and uh it's still called Gantz quarry but they kind of changed things around you know how corporations work but now you see what we got but this is the <coughs> original hole and if you'll notice this water down here uh one of y'all's guests asked me what that water was. Well, it's natural. And if you'll see these uh, these decks down here, they had to put these big old pumps on these decks. And they are steady pumping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because if they didn't, it would fill up. And if you'll notice these little roads right here is where these big yicks used to come down in here. There wouldn't be no water there if you could use your imagination. They would go down there and they would get the marble out. That's how they got it out. But without those pumps and keeping the water out, you couldn't get down in there. So now you see, like I said, the water table was way up here. Now it's down here it's because of the drought we've had over the years. And I know on rainy days, you don't think about drought, but we haven't caught up to where we was a hundred years ago. So. It is what it is, but we're, we're, we're not dry, but we're not as wet as was normal a hundred years ago. And uh, any, more, any questions y'all have? How far is it across this hole? It's, it's farther than most people think. It's a lot farther than most people think. Uh, I don't know exactly how far, but uh, as you can see on this sign down here, you can see the hot the rock is actually goes 400 foot deep it's one and a half miles wide and it goes 32 miles long which actually from here goes all the way to coosa river now we won't never mind up on the coosa river but from what i understand there's enough rock out here for generations to come for years and years and years they will be jobs you know, our Avondales and Russell Mills and clothing, all that has moved on to other places. But the choir was here first, it's still here, and it'll be here last. So, yes, ma'am. Is it most, how is it transported? By plane or train? Or several different several ways. Several different ways? Yes, ma'am. That's mostly. Train? Train. Train's the most way. Okay. If uh, you happen to see 
these round cars that's got a lot of marble dust on it. Some of them transport it. Some of these companies want it already liquefied, which we call slurry. Those are slurry cars. Some of them wants the powder. So they'll get the powder. And we also use transfer trucks now, you know, just depending on how the company wants it transported. But it's mostly done by train now. Okay. Any more questions? Would you said this is old. From what, what year did they quit working in this? Do you know? Uh, this is right here. I'm on say it was back in the 80s. They well, quit like the working right here. Now, it actually goes all the way back to 1830. So you can imagine what kind of labor they put in to it. By getting this out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm talking about almost 100 years. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They use mills and they use the mills. 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 And it was a slow go about getting this rock out of here. And you can imagine, you know, like I said, now we use dynamite. You can imagine back in the day how much labor was put into breaking one of these pieces of rock up. I know that. I think this is the first one I've ever seen them back before. Yes, sir. And it was like you said, that's rude. Them it is. down there look like concrete. That's right. Like I said, it goes down 400 feet deep is what you can get it out you know and uh and it doesn't come out white it has mud over the years that transferred you know and if you'll notice in the library that one spot there there were several different kinds different colors well that's actually in here too and uh every once in a while They'll run, now this right here is just from over time. When they first mined this right here, it was real wide. But they do have what's called black streaks in it. Well, these companies that buy this, they don't exactly want this bright white. They kind of want it off-white, maybe a little bit darker. Well, sometimes they'll run into a black streak in this vein that we got. and. Uh, what we might call waste, but it's not really waste. So they'll take these that's got the black streaks and they'll put it off to the side. And then when they get some that's just super bright white and it blinds you, these companies that kind of want a little off-white color, they'll take that waste and mix it with this bright white and get to the color that they want, that people want to buy. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Mormon. Yes, sir. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints just built a great big old cultural hall. Yes, sir. They got 3,000 three by three foot white marble blocks out of this thing to put in their floor. Exactly. Isn't that amazing? That was expensive, y'all. That's expensive. Now, I'm not going to tell you this marble is cheap, but it's not so expensive that you can't buy some. And, uh, like I said, Emory's gets it out of the hall, and uh, they'll, whatever the customer may want, you know, what, what size it wants. And Omnia actually turns it into powder and makes liquid marble dust. And then you got a company called AM3. They're the one that had a fast stone earlier. They're the ones that actually makes the countertops and floor tiles and ceiling tiles. So, uh, they're three different kinds. They're actually based out of best. Well, like I said again, thank y'all for coming to Silicaga. I hope y'all come back. I hope you enjoyed the Marvel Festival. And y'all be careful going home. You're welcome to look around and read these signs. One and, uh, of those big rocks right there. Yes, ma'am. Are they the ones that have been taken out or what? Yes, ma'am. Those are ones I was telling you about. They used derricks back in the day to get them out. If you can use your imagination, there was little towers all around this hole right here, and they had cables running across with big hooks on them. They would hook these big pieces of rock up and transfer them across these cables. That's how they got up there.